Hey there, so hopefully in the previous lesson you uh, followed the instructions to set up our environment so that we can start practicing the SQL. So here we are in, uh, in our PG Admin 3 application and uh, we've created the schema called Course Schema and um, we can click on this SQL um, icon. When you click on that it opens this window which is sort of a script window. We can type in stuff into this and, uh, and hit this play button and that will basically execute the commands. So um, I've provided a script as part of this course that will basically set up the database for you. And then we're going to actually practice the SQL statements against that, uh, that database. So I've already copied that to my clipboard. I'm going to paste that script here. I just pasted it and go all the way to the top. And it's not important to go over the details of what these are just yet. Uh, we'll uh, visit them on an as-needed basis as we progress in the course. But uh, bring your cursor up to the first line here and hit this. Uh, there's two play buttons. There's this one uh, without the PGS or whatever, and then the other play button right here. Um, you want to you want to click on the second one, which is uh, execute PG script because this essentially is uh, a, a set of um, statements and it's. Uh, usually referred to as a script, okay? Um, so again, this as part of this course, you've been provided the script. You paste that here, put your cursor on the first line, and then hit this button. So let's click on that. And now we've pretty much uh, set up our environment, our, our database, so that we can query the data. So I'm just going to highlight all of this and hit the delete button. And now we've cleared our SQL editor. So there are two tables in that script. One of them is called employees. And the other table is called department. OK. And to be able to um, get data from that table, uh, there's a specific statement that we have to execute. And that is called the select statement. So we'll start from there. The select statement is used to basically um, get the data from the particular table. So I'm going to type that up here, select uh, star from, and don't worry what the star is for, for now, we'll visit that soon. So I'm going to highlight this particular statement and then hit the play button. And here uh, in the output pane, we can see uh, the data coming back. Okay. So this is referred to as a column, right? Each one of these are columns vertically down, and uh, uh, each column has a as a name. So for example, this column is called Dep ID, which stands for the department's ID, and then D name is another is the other column name, which stands for the name of that department, and then the location, okay, L O C. And uh, the, the way data is stored in a table is in rows and columns. So what I've selected here, this is a column, this is a column, this is a column. There are three columns in this table. And there are one, two, three, four rows. Okay. So when you click on this uh, one here, you'll see that we're highlighting the entire row. All right. Um, so it's important to make that distinction between what a column is and what a row is in a database table. So now coming back to this statement, the first command here is called the select, and the second command is from, and this could be any arbitrary table. In our case, it's the department table, okay? So these are two commands that are part of the SQL language, and this makes up, I would say, uh, you know, 60 to 70% of all the SQL queries you're ever going to write, you're definitely going to need these two uh, commands. You're going to see them everywhere. So uh, remember I had a star here before. I'm going to get rid of that star, and I'm going to give a particular column name. And looking down here in this table, I'm going to select the first column name, which is Dep ID. So let's do that. And now when I... Um, run this, notice that that entire column uh, is being selected, right? So again, these are the rows, okay? And this is the, the particular column, right? Now, the other column was D name, 
right, which was the department name. So I'm adding another column here as part of this select statement. So I'm highlighting this whole thing and then I'm hitting run again and notice that we now have two columns, right, the dep ID, D name, um, and then again, these are the rows, okay? Um, and then the third column was, I think, LOC for location. So I'm gonna play that and uh, here's our third column, okay? So again, what does this table mean? What is it saying uh, about the data? Well, basically what it's saying is that they, we have a department, uh, which is the accounting department that's located in New York, and it has a particular ID, and that ID is the number 10. We have a research department that's located in Dallas, we have a sales department located in Chicago, and we have an operations department located in Boston, all right? And each one of these departments have a, has a unique identifier. And that's what this, basically, this ID column is. It's a unique identifier for each one of these particular departments, all right? Uh, typically, in a database table, you'll notice that the first column of that table is the unique identifier uh, value holder. All right, so this particular column holds values that uniquely identify every single every single row. Okay, so um, that's basically the objective of this uh, particular column. And then there are other attributes, you know, such as the D name, uh, the department name, and then the location. And then we can have many other columns. But in this particular example, we uh, only have these three columns. Okay, so selecting all, if you want to select all of the columns, the shortcut is the star, which we had before, okay? And uh, that will basically, when I run this, it's going to give the same exact result because we only have three columns in this table. So let's hit the play button and notice that the exact same output is returned, all right? So let's try the same thing with the employee. I'm going to say select star from employee and highlight that statement and then hit the play button here and notice that this table is printed, uh, is, is you know shown in our, in our output pane rather. So again, uh, this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns, okay? The first column uniquely identifies every single uh, record of this table, right? These are the records, right, the, or the rows. Um, another, another name for a record or another term for row is record, okay? So this is a record, this is a record, this is a record, all right? And then these are the columns or the attributes of this table, all right? So again, what this is saying is we have uh, an employee table in which we store data about employees. And we have uh, every employee is represented by a unique identifier known as the EMP ID, the employee's ID. And we have a, a name for an employee, his name is King. And let's just say for, uh, for example, these are just last names stored in this table. Uh, someone with the last name of King has an ID of 7839. His job is that he's a president and uh, there's no real manager. This is basically representing uh, the, the particular employee's manager ID. So we don't have to worry about that for this particular role. He's a president. He doesn't even have a manager. And then we have some dates. He was hired on this particular date. His salary is some arbitrary number. And then the commission column. And then we have this DEP ID, which remember that uh, this DEP ID was also located in the department table. All right, so if I run this, uh, the department query, Notice that the first column here is the DEP ID. So this is the same exact um, ID column is also in the employee table like that, but it means different things. And we'll go over what that is later. Um, but basically this is the rundown of our database tables, right? So the script that we had executed generated two tables for us, the employee table, as well as the department table and uh, we're gonna be using both of these tables throughout the course. All of our queries are gonna be basically centered around these two tables, and there's a lot of advanced uh, SQL queries you can write and practice with, uh, with just these two tables, all right? So uh, I'll see you in the next lesson.